question 20 says A, B, C, D and A, F, G, C, H are regular pentagons. The two pentagons are the same size and it wants me to work out the size of angle E, A, H. And you must show how you get your answer. So just looking in here, we can see we've got this pentagon here and then we've got this other one which overlaps it and they're regular pentagons. So that tells me all the angles uh, within the pentagon uh, are the same and the lengths of the pentagon are the same as well. Okay, you can see I've already labelled some things up here uh, for my work in. But let's just see how I got to some of these. So firstly, because I know uh, that a pentagon has five sides, I know that I can split it up into three triangles. Okay, it's always two less the number of triangles um, to the number of sides. Um, so if I can split a pentagon into three triangles, three lots of 180 gives me 540. So that is the total for the interior angles of a regular pentagon. Um, well, for any pentagon, in fact. So one, two, three, four, five. All of those add up to 540. I can then use that information of it being a regular pentagon to then work out what one of the angles are because they're all the same. Uh, 540 divided by five is 108. And this is a non-calculated paper, so I've just done the bus stop method over here. So each of these angles are 108. So I've labeled this one 108, and I've also labeled this one here 108. So, what next? Well, I've looked at this shape here, this uh, four-sided shape. Because I know this is 108, this one is as well. Uh, two ways you can think of this. Either the fact that this shape here is symmetrical, means that these two opposites are the same. Or I could think of it as, again, I've got another regular pentagon here. So interior angle of the pentagon is 108. So both of those are 108. And I know that angles in a four-sided shape add up to 360. So if I do 360, take away those 208, I'm left with 144. So these two add to 144. And then if I just half it, because they're the same, it gives me 72. So that angle there is 72 degrees. Now, how am I going to use that information? Well, I want this one here. I've just labeled it X, okay? E, A, H, this angle here. Well, because I know that the total for an interior angle in a regular pentagon is 108, all this is 108 degrees. And because that bit is 72, I can set this up. I can say X plus that 72 must equal 108. Okay, those two combined must add to give 108. And by doing that, I can work out that that missing angle is 36 degrees. Question 21. The last question in the paper says, Harry travels from Appleton to Broccoli at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. He then travels from Broccoli to Cantham at an average speed of 70 miles per hour. Harry takes a total time of five hours to travel from Appleton to Cantham. The distance from Broccoli to Cantham is 210 miles. Calculate Harry's average speed from the total distance travelled uh, from Appleton to Cantham. There's an awful lot of information there. Now, the best way to set up these sort of questions where you've got uh, two parts of a journey, different speeds, is to do a table. So I've set up a table like this. So I've got speed, distance and time. I've got Appleton to Broccoli and Broccoli to Cantham and then I've got the overall journey from Appleton to Cantham because that's what I'm interested in and I want to work out the speed, I want the number here. Um, so I'm going to start by putting all the information that's in the question. The first bit, average speed of 50 miles per hour is going to go here and Broccoli to Cantham was 70 so that's going to go there. The distance from Broccoli to Cantham was 210 so the middle box is going to have 210 in. Oh, and then also this one, five hours to travel from Appleton to Cantham. So that's going to go bottom right corner. And by doing that, I can work out these other numbers. Okay, so the ones in blue are the ones which are given in the question. This, this, this and this. So what did I work out next? Well, uh, it was this middle line here. I knew the speed was 70 and the distance was 210. So if he's going 70 miles per hour, and he travels a total distance of 210. Well, if I times that by three, I get this. So he must have been traveling for three hours. Okay, think of it like that. 70 miles per hour for three hours, 210. And now because I have, uh, I've worked out this one, this three, 
and this one, we know the overall was five hours. That meant that Appleton to Broccoli took two hours. So I've now got this number. And then I could then work out this one because if he was traveling 50 miles per hour for two hours, then he's got a total distance of 100 miles per hour. And now I've got that one, adding these two together gives me the total overall distance of 310 miles. So now I've got 310 miles in five hours. I want to work out what it would travel in one hour because that would be the speed. So I've done 310 divided by five and I get 62. So this number here in green is my final answer. It is 62 miles per hour.